Welcome to GameSack. The first time I played PlayStation VR, I was kind of blown away, so it didn't take me long to jump on board. I figured now would be as good as time as any to show off some games that are available on the console. Well, it's not a console, it's a platform. But first, a short bit about the PlayStation VR itself. The PlayStation VR was launched in October of 2013. The processor box and headset connects to a PlayStation 4 with several wires. A camera is also needed. The headset features 5.7-inch OLED screens running at a rate of 90 or 120 frames per second. It also has a resolution of 960 by 1080 pixels per eye and a 110-degree field of view. Many VR games feature visual performance enhancements when played on a PS4 Pro. The PSVR is also compatible with a PlayStation 5 with a special adapter, but there are no performance increases at all. The end. Yeah, when I said short, I meant short. Anyway, I've got 18 different games to show you in this video, so what are you waiting for? Let's get started. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Wait, that's my job. Here's Res Infinite from Enhance, and it has a physical release from IM 8-Bit. You don't have to have a PlayStation VR to play this one, but I highly, highly recommend it. As a game, it's pretty simple. Just hold down the button and lock onto up to eight targets and then release your firepower. There are certain items that you get which will fill up your meter in the bottom left. Once it fills, you evolve. The more evolved you are, the more hits you can take before you die. The red items go on the bottom right and basically give you a bomb attack for lack of a better term. Lastly are the cubes. Shoot these to advance deeper into the level. But you may want to hold off on these if you feel there's more to the current level that you want to explore. Eventually you'll get to a boss and, well, you know the drill. There are five different areas in all in the basic game. You can pan your head around to move the cursor to lock onto the enemies, but I really don't recommend playing the game that way. Instead, just use a controller's analog pad like you normally would. It makes the game much more comfortable. The graphics are awesome, yet simple. Give me vectors and flat shaded polygons and I am a happy man. The music is far more impressive as it adds layers to the track the deeper you get into the level. The controller also rumbles to the beat, and it's one of the few times that I don't want to disengage controller vibration. There's also Area X, which is all new. This one forgoes the vectors and flat shaded polygons for colorful particle effects. You can also roam around freely, and it takes a bit of getting used to. It is a fun area to play, though, from time to time. All in all, I've always liked Res, but never again do I want to play this game without VR. The only things I could ask for would be more resolution for sharper lines and to please get rid of the boss rush at the end. Ace Combat 7 Skies Unknown is one of those games that has a few missions specifically for VR. Right away I was in awe as it seemed like I was standing right next to this plane. Well, sitting next to it anyway. Next thing I know I'm in the cockpit and it's so damn cool. I take off and start flying around and of course I'm gonna do some rolls. Oh my, that feels really weird and I'm not sure if I like it. I quickly crashed. But I immediately tried again, and suddenly the weird motion oddness that I was experiencing before was gone. Battling enemies in this mode is super fun, looking for them and just going every which way. No motion sickness at all. I also love how this condensation looks on my canopy, it's incredibly real. I don't care much for the long periods of flying around and boringness between battles, but the battles themselves are great. This is a fantastic bonus if you own the game. Until Dawn, Rush of Blood is the game that actually sold me on VR. This one is a light gun game on rails, literally. Using two move controllers, you can dual wield different weapons as you shoot scary things that are trying to cause you harm on your little roller coaster ride. You can use a normal controller as well if you prefer. It's not uncommon for one of your guns to get a little jittery or cocked in one direction or another, but shaking the controller can alleviate that a bit. The atmosphere in this game is pretty intense, and I love it. 
It's super fun to shoot things and I really enjoy the imagination of the developers. Not sure what the game has to do with Until Dawn though. This is a pretty bloody game, so if you don't like that, well, you're not gonna like this. Oh, and I urge you to wear headphones when you play this. If you don't, you're really missing out on the immersiveness of this one. Honestly, that can be said for almost all VR games. You want it to sound like you're there too, not just look like it. This one is great fun and it's always the first game I let those who haven't experienced a VR game play. They always love it. This is a PlayStation VR exclusive game and I can't imagine not having this one in my library. Pap, pap, pap goes my Glock. Here's Batman Arkham VR. I recall this one being pretty cheap. In this title, you play as Batman, of course. It's definitely best if you play it standing up, and you'll need a single move controller. Anyway, in this game, you're in detective mode pretty much 100% of the time. There's really not much action for you to participate in. You have to use your tools to investigate and piece together small puzzles. You move around by looking at one of the predetermined points you can stand at and pressing the move button. It was weird for me way back when I first tried VR, but these days it feels pretty natural for a VR game. This title is short, but it's pretty good. I like the part near the end, is this kinda trippy? You'll finish this in no time, but there's still stuff you can do afterwards. Not a whole lot of substance here, but it's a good time while it lasts. Who invited him? Everybody's dad likes golf, right? Well, how about a VR game that's not just for your dad, but for everybody? Another exclusive for the PlayStation VR is Everybody's Golf VR. This isn't the normal Everybody's Golf with a quick VR mode tacked on. It's an entirely new game. I've loved all of the other games in the series, so of course I had to try this one. I like it, though I feel it could be better. You play standing up, or rather, it's definitely best if you do. You can use a move controller or a normal one, but either way you're gonna be swinging it, so I recommend the move. The game guides you through a few basics before it begins, naturally. Hitting the ball is both fun and frustrating. You have to stand super far away from the camera so that it can see the light from your move at the top and bottom of your swing, so you need a lot of room for this one. It can also get a little twitchy or sometimes the club isn't being held straight. Again, shaking the move a little can fix this. This is much more realistic than any other game in the series and it also feels really empty compared to those. Still, it can be pretty fun. I like how gigantic the courses feel. The staff at the clubhouse are also really short. Is it that time already? Okay, maybe I shouldn't be such a creepy guy walking around the counter, but hey, it looks like it's really there. I gotta see if I can do it. You won't do as well at this game as you do in the other Hot Shots games, but it eases you into it. In the end, I do like it, but only sometimes. <gasps> it's in a bunker. Ah yes, gotta mention Beat Saber. This is a pretty well-known rhythm game that's on all of the different VR platforms. In fact, I first played this years ago on an HTC Vive Pro at Yoshi Vu's place. He's the 3D artist for GameSack, if you didn't know. Basically, you have two differently colored lightsabers that aren't licensed from Lucasfilm, and you need to swipe down the same colored cubes as they come at you to the beat of the music. In addition, you need to swipe the cubes in the direction the arrows point. If that's not enough, you need to step out of the way for all of the incoming walls and sometimes even duck under them. I wish I didn't have to duck quite so far, you really have to crouch. And that's not just this version, I thought the same thing on the HTC Vive Pro. Other than that, this is a super fun and addictive game that anyone can play. You will wander around the room a bit as you play this, so it's good if you have someone there with you to make sure you don't go too far from your original location. The move controllers work well here, and their flaws never become apparent because you're always shaking them, which means they keep behaving. You can get a lot of extra music track add-ons if you're willing to spend the coin. Maybe if they come out with a version with Sega Game Music or Iron Maiden or something. 
I really wish I could add my own music. I still recommend it anyway. This is PlayStation VR Worlds by London Studio, which is, of course, exclusive to the PlayStation VR. It was also bundled with the VR hardware. This is more or less a series of demos. There's Ocean Descent, where you basically just stand there while you're being lowered into the ocean. You just look around and enjoy the show. This one's a good one to show off to your mom who's never experienced VR before because she doesn't have to worry about doing anything. I mean, this is the one I showed my mom and she loved it. Next, there's Danger Ball. Basically, you just use your head to aim the reticle and hit the ball. You need to score five goals before your opponent does. No danger here, or much fun really. Then there's VR Luge. You ride a luge downhill on a street with active traffic, of course. I mean, what fun would an empty street be? You steer by tilting your head, which is the worst idea in a world of bad ideas. It's tough to control and you might get some motion sickness out of it. I didn't, but it's just weird. I don't really recommend it. But if you've got your heart set on motion sickness, then you'll love Scavenger's Odyssey. You make huge jumps from platform to platform in space where direction has no meaning. My stomach can't take much of this. Even when you get inside, it feels pretty bad. I've read that this might be caused by the game only running at 60 frames per second, which is generally considered too low for VR with movement like this, but Sony thinks it's fine. I'm not sure if that's what causes it or not, though. That's just what I've read. Don't kill the messenger, and I know you want to. Anyway, I cannot play this title very much. The last game on here is London Heist. This one is story-based, kind of. You're a thief who goes in to steal a big old diamond. This is the only game on the disc which allows you to use the move controllers, and I recommend that you do if you have them. There's a fun shootout where you're stuck behind a desk. After that, you're in a car, and the shooting action is even more fun. I love this. This is by far the best title on the disc. The sad thing is that it's over way too soon, but it's really enjoyable while it lasts. This is Blood and Truth, which is another PlayStation VR exclusive. This game by London Studio basically takes London Heist from VR Worlds and expands it with its very own game. And wow, I am so glad that they did because this is awesome. In this one, you play as a fellow named Ryan Marks as he recounts his adventures doing war and secret agent type of stuff. That's how it starts out anyway. You shoot guns, throw grenades, pick locks, pull switches, and lots of other hands-on stuff. You definitely want the move controllers for the best experience, and if you've played London Heist, then you know that's a given. I had a slightly hard time getting things set up, but once I figured everything out, I was good to go and could do anything I needed to very quickly. Nothing here is overly complicated, and that's good. The action scenes are super fun, and you can even move around. Basically, a mark appears somewhere if you can move there. Look at it and press the move button to go there. You can also strafe left and right one space with the X and circle buttons. It actually works pretty well, and it's fairly intuitive. And of course, the driving and shooting segment is back and it's just as fun, if not even more so. There's plenty to do in this title. There's lots of story between each action scene and believe it or not, even that stuff is pretty fun. I like bending the laws of physics as I'm being interrogated. I mean, does he not even see me doing this stuff? Shouldn't he be concerned about reality like I am? How is this happening, sir? Sir? Oh well. The game is quite hard to put down and if you have a PlayStation VR, this is a must own. I am so glad that I got this one. He's coming for me. He's catching up. Oh, God. Don't shoot Ryan. He can lead us all right, all right. Where's Tony? Here's Pixel Ripped 1989. You start out as a dot in some video game land and then chaos happens so you need to invade portable game systems of kids to save your world. Or something like that, the story doesn't really matter much. You need to play your game system in class while simultaneously distracting the teacher because you don't want to get caught. It's a really good idea and it takes advantage of VR, but I think they overdid it a little bit. You need to shoot spitballs at the teacher as much as you can while playing the game at the same time. 
You can't just occasionally distract her here and there, but instead every few seconds, otherwise she catches you, and if she catches you three times, it's game over. And if you pay too much attention to not getting caught, you die in the game. It's just too much to be enjoyable instead of annoying, but I do like the concept. And can the blowing on the cartridge trope just die already, please? The virtual environment is huge, and even the little kids seem like massive giants. At least the music is pretty good. I thought I gave this game a bad rap, so I came back a week later and tried it again with a fresh perspective, and I still don't like it. Great idea, just horrible execution. The sequel is called Pixel Ripped 1995. Thankfully, this one is a lot better. It takes place in more of a 16-bit world now. You're playing as the same video game character again, and you begin by equipping yourself. You need to use the controller to play the game and not the move. Unfortunately, that makes things like this extremely awkward and more difficult than they need to be. You start off by playing an overhead run and gun which has a lot of inspiration from Zelda. It's not bad at all, and it's definitely more interesting than the game you were playing in the first Pixel Ripped. It works kind of like Sonic, as as long as you have at least one of the little square thingies, you can take a hit without dying. The graphics as you're playing look better and more clear than what you see here, and closer too. All while this is happening, people are distracting you with their nonsense in the house. For some reason, your mom doesn't want you to play video games, like, at all. Weirdo. You have to distract her with a toy gun sometimes, but not every few seconds like you did with the dumb teacher in the first game. Grabbing the gun requires you make your character let go of the controller with the R2 button. Hits extremely awkward. If you don't distract your mom enough, she turns off the game console as you're playing. Fortunately, there's a ton of save points and you can just play again and resume from there. This right here makes it infinitely better than the first Pixel Ripped game. Infinitely. Anyway, you keep doing this and distracting your parents until you beat the short main quest of the game. Then the game becomes kind of an augmented reality thing where you're fighting with the game characters on your living room floor. You sometimes have to grab the toy gun to collapse the Jenga towers that the enemy climbs on, and I found myself out of the play area and unable to do this quite often. But eventually I got it. Next, you're in a video rental store where you're stuck between a kiosk with two game consoles. They're somehow linked together and you can just play either of them by grabbing the controller. If you grab a power-up on one console's game, you can use it for a limited amount of time on the other console to get past obstacles. Definitely a neat idea. Once again, the music is pretty darn good. I do wish that grabbing objects was mapped to a button instead of motion controlled because your arms can get twisted around and it just doesn't work well at all. Overall, Pixel Ripped 1995 is the one that I recommend. Just skip the first one. What do you ask? But I'm telling you anyway, that game is a masterpiece. Yeah, a masterpiece. I don't need a nanny. She just, she just cooks for me and stuff. Take out your clothes too. I don't know about you, but I think the PlayStation VR needs a mascot. No one pays attention to a gaming platform without a mascot. That's why we have Astrobot. This is Astrobot Rescue Mission from Sony. This is another fantastic game that you can only get on the PlayStation VR. You may recognize the little robot guy that you control from the Astrobot game that came with the PlayStation 5. Well, this is his first game. Well, actually it's his second, but I'll get to that. You use the controller in this one to run around the stages. This controls exactly like the PlayStation 5 game with the punches and the jumps. You can also press jump again to fire thrusters to float for a bit, which can damage enemies below you. You go forward through each stage collecting large and small coins as well as rescuing other robot friends who are stranded. Just walk up to them and give them a good smack and they'll go straight into your controller. You really want to rescue as many of these guys as you can, otherwise future levels won't unlock. Many of them are hidden pretty well, so you really have to take your time and explore everywhere if you want to get them all. Sometimes your controller will be modified and you can use it as a tool by using the big old rectangle button in the middle of it. This of course adds some motion control to the game, but for something like this, I don't mind at all since it's handled really well. For example, you can use a rope to pull out walls to advance. Or the little robot can walk on the rope that you shoot and you swing the controller up to send them flying into the air to grab stuff that's usually well out of his reach. Sometimes you even have to use your head to bash things out of the way. Of course, there are boss fights and these are really fun and often kind of intense. 
In these, you have heart icons next to you, which means you can take three hits before you die instead of the usual one hit. Speaking of dying, there are lots of checkpoints throughout each area, so you won't go back too terribly far if and when you die. You do have unlimited lives though, since this is a modern game. Sometimes you have to blow, and that's really the only thing that I don't think works very well at all. There's stuff hidden everywhere in this game, above you, below you, even behind you. The first few times I played this, it made my neck really sore trying to see everything. Of course, I was sitting on my couch. But I found that if you sit in a chair that swivels like an office chair, it makes the game much more comfortable physically. You still sometimes have to move your head to peer around a corner so you can see, but I never had any aches when using my office chair. The graphics are amazing and everything looks and feels very solid. There's tons of colors and crazy designs everywhere. The sound and music are also both great. If you listen, you can hear your friends that you need to rescue, and their yells come from the direction that they're hidden, so that definitely helps. Once again, I recommend headphones for sure. Most of the music tracks are excellent, with only one or two mediocre tunes. If you have a PlayStation VR, you really need this one in your collection. Yeah, you can suck at HTC Vive owners, or Oculus owners, or Facebook VR owners. Actually, you guys probably don't care. <laughs> Speaking of Astrobot, there's also the Playroom VR, which is free to download. This is basically another tech demo for the PlayStation VR, but it can still be pretty fun. This is where Astrobot made his very first appearance. And you thought he showed up first on the PlayStation 5, you're so silly. This stage plays just like Rescue Mission, but you can tell it's a lot earlier as some things don't work quite as smoothly as that game. This is still really fun though, and its popularity resulted in Rescue Mission being made. I mean, I guess, I don't know how Sony works. There are also other games in here which take advantage of multiple players. In this stage, for example, the person in the VR headset is smashing buildings with his head while the players look at the TV and run away. I can't show you what the headset sees here. You can only see me as a monster bashing buildings with my head. My point of view is from the monster. At the end of this short stage, the players looking at the TV need to throw stuff at the person with the VR headset, and they need to dodge the objects that are being thrown. It's almost like playing a really weird LAN game or something or this one where you enter a haunted house. The people looking at the TV see the same thing as the person wearing the headset does, but the headset doesn't see the ghosts. As you shine your flashlight around, people need to yell at you to tell you how close you are to capture the ghosts. It's kind of neat, actually. Since this title is meant to be viewed on the TV simultaneously by other people, it seems to be one of the few, if not the only game that fills the TV screen entirely as you play. As you may or may not have noticed, all the other games have black bars on the side. None of the two-player mechanics here ended up moving on to Astrobot Rescue Mission. The Playroom VR is short but fun. There's a joke there, but I ain't doing it. Wipeout Omega Collection was updated to support VR. You can now play the entire game this way. If you're like me, the first thought you have upon learning this is wondering how much motion sickness is involved. Well, when I first started playing this, it definitely felt a little weird. Not sick, just weird. It did get a little bit better, but I was never able to entirely shake the weird feeling. Granted, the way the Wipeout games float around and bob and weave and bounce has never made me feel totally comfortable since the day the series was introduced. But that's just me. Actually, it probably isn't. Anyway, everything looks great as it's all life-size, meaning these racing vehicles are actually quite large. Definitely bigger than they look on a 2D screen. Looking into a turn as you race helps a bit with lessening the weirdness. As a game, it's fantastic, with three different Wipeout games all prettied up for the PlayStation 4 here. Tons of content in this one. Unfortunately, after I ended the game, I did need to lie down for a bit because I felt a tad dizzy, but then again, I was kind of tired already when I started playing this game anyway. But I wouldn't recommend playing this for more than 10 or 15 minutes at a time if you feel a bit weird, otherwise motion sickness may set in. There are a few things you can do to reduce the chance of motion sickness, but I didn't try any of that. I'm a man, I'll take my vomit with pride! Shield. Shield active. 
Here's Job Simulator from Alchemy Labs. This is one that people talk about a lot when it comes to VR experiences, or at least they used to. This requires both move controllers. You start out by picking one of four human jobs to do. There's the office, a chef, a convenience store clerk, and a mechanic. Each job places you in a space with lots of stuff for you to interact with. Basically, the jobs that you do are simulations by the robots of what they think humans used to do. As a human, they're just trying to make you feel at home, I guess. Of course, none of these jobs are accurate and it's all basically a parody. A bulletin board that's nearby tells you how to accomplish each goal. Once you do everything needed, you pull another paper or ticket or whatever and move on to the next task. Since it's a parody, it can be pretty funny and entertaining. Could I also get one of those meat cylinders, please? Hot dogs are in the freezer. Make sure you heat them up, at least a little bit. My favorite job is the mechanic. You cheat customers out of cash and even help some criminals in addition to your normal duties. Also, this one has a radio that you listen to with songs that the robots think you'll enjoy. And I do enjoy them, even though there's only two songs and a few talk radio stations. The virtual environment is a bit too large, so you'll have to reach high, low, and far in order to access everything. It's very difficult to set up properly at the beginning. I'm not sure if standing or sitting works best. Either way, I found myself moving out of the play area sometimes as the game just demands too much range of motion from you. Yes, even if you stand where they tell you to stand in the beginning. Sometimes the game will mess up. Like here, I sold this robot some stuff at the store and took her money. Now I have to give her the change, but she didn't take it and it fell over the counter. If I bend over the counter, I can see it, but there's no way I can get it. The coin doesn't reappear on the counter for me to give it to her, and there's no way I can complete the task or progress in the game. So yes, it can be kind of buggy. And yes, it can definitely be enjoyable and somewhat funny, but once you do all or even half of the tasks in each job, it starts to get a little boring. There's not a ton of replayability here. It's fun to let people who are new to VR try it, but even they'll get bored after a bit. It's an interesting concept, but it's certainly no legend in its own time like some people make it out to be. Oh, thanks, human. I'll get this squared away uh, later. You're the best. I really like how VR puts you into the game. It's like you're actually there. It's so incredibly immersive. So it's reasonable to assume that a scary game would be even scarier in VR. Resident Evil 7 is available on many platforms, but it can only be played in VR on the PlayStation VR. You can play the entire game this way. I first played this in regular old 2D, figuring that I didn't want to wear this ridiculous helmet the entire time. But I tell you, it's really cool playing this in VR, especially if you start from the beginning. You use the regular controller here, and there's no motion sensing anywhere other than just turning your head. Moving around is pretty simple, and you snap your view 30 degrees in either direction with the right analog stick. This is kind of weird at first. Actually, it is kind of a bit off-putting throughout, but you do learn to tolerate it. As a game, it's pretty creepy with some gross ambience. Somebody call a maid, maybe two. You're off to find your missing wife. It doesn't take long before you do. As you're trying to escape, you discover that she's pretty cray cray. The video you're looking at here appears a touch darker than it seems to be when you're wearing the headset. Things are clear and easy to make out most of the time. Playing in VR does reveal that a lot of textures are flat that you wouldn't notice if you were playing in 2D. The shadow edge detail is also a lot worse in VR compared to when you're playing it normally. But otherwise, it looks damn fine. Unless you're really slow, you've probably noticed that this game is in a first-person perspective. This game was clearly made with VR in mind. There are plenty of times where someone will try to stick something right in your face or your eyes. I think perhaps they get a bit too close, but it's still a fun effect. Also, I really need to mention the binaural audio. Hearing the creepy ass sounds throughout the house while you're in VR is amazing. Capcom did an absolutely excellent job with the VR presentation here. Sometimes the game will snap back to 2D for a cutscene or part of a cutscene, but it doesn't detract from the overall experience. 
If you haven't played through this game before and you have a PlayStation VR, try playing the game for the first time from the beginning in VR mode. It'll be even creepier that way. Here's a game called Moss, and it's from Polyarch. In this one, you're a being who directly controls a mouse. She can jump, shimmy ledges, and swing her sword. This is a puzzle game, and the goal is to get her from the entrance of a screen to its exit. As a super being called a reader, you can also move shiny objects around using motion controls. And if these shiny things are in a stage, chances are you need to move them at least once. The game is fun and inventive, but generally I don't have much interest in puzzle games but I still did find a lot to enjoy here. Fighting enemies can be fun. As a reader, you can also pick up and control some enemies. The story is told by someone who's reading a book and I really don't care for that part as the same person does all the voices and it sounds like I'm a child being read to. I mean, that's obviously exactly what they're trying to portray, but I just don't find it endearing or entertaining. Suffice it to say, you're on a journey to catch up to your uncle or something. This is such a strange land that you travel through with so many puzzles and traps. It can be easy to die, but as a reader, you can also heal the mouse before she dies. I admit that some puzzles can seem really tough at first, but mostly because you can't see everything. Even if you move your head around, it can be tough to see all of the little passageways and whatnot. There's no scrolling or movement of any kind, but sometimes the screen you're looking at will pulse or breathe back and forth and it's kind of odd. I'm sure this is probably more of a PSVR problem than a moss problem. The graphics are really nice with a ton of depth, and the music is fitting. If this looks like fun to you, then give it a go. You'll find a nice brain-teasing adventure. This one is called Derasane. Wait, that can't be right. It's gotta be pronounced Derasane. Sounds like you need a prescription for it. This game is by From Software and it's a PlayStation VR exclusive and you'll need the move controllers for it. It kind of plays like a point and click adventure game. That's good, I love point and click adventure games. You play as a fairy trying to prove your existence, at least from what I gather. It's all very strange. The movement is kind of odd as you have to press the tiny buttons on the move to rotate and then there are other buttons for crouching and actually moving. If you're standing next to a person or an important object, the direction of the rotating buttons change for some reason. Why? Still, it almost becomes second nature after a while. Basically, time is standing still for everyone but you. You can store time by stealing life from grapes or whatever and then use the time on things so that they do something. You can interact with some items, but not many. One nice thing, though, is that you can pet the dog, even if the dog doesn't know it because time is standing still. Oh, look, I wonder if you can pet the kitty cat. <coughs> yeah, I guess not. Yikes. The first real mission has you trying to find a bunch of herbs that the kids have hidden to place in the stew. Some of the vials with the herbs in them you can see and even grab, but you can't take them with you for some reason without doing something else first. Same goes for this key, which I need it to open a box upstairs. It became boring as I felt I had looked everywhere like four or five times and it just wasn't fun exploring anymore. Honestly, I feel this one would be a lot better if it weren't a VR game, mainly because I want to relax as I explore and I can't really do that while wearing all of this gear and holding these controllers. A lot of people love this one for some reason. Don't get mad because I don't. <gasps> Is the fairy come to play? The fairy couldn't open the box. Last up is Farpoint from Impulse Gear. This is exclusive to the PlayStation VR. It's also a first person shooter. Unfortunately, the game only uses one save file and you can't start over, so I have to start where I left off. I wish the PlayStation 4 had a hard drive or something so that more than one game save could exist, but that kind of technology is probably decades away. What do I know though? 
Anyway, basically the premise is that you crash land on some planet, as did some of your co-workers. Along the way, you can scan some of their residual memories or something like that, and see what they did before you got there. I forget exactly what's going on because it's been quite some time since I played this. But mainly, you keep walking and shooting the same enemies over and over. Not to say that this is bad, quite the contrary. It's actually very good. You'd think that you could use the move controller, but no. The game needs you to use two analog sticks to move around. You can use an aim controller, but those are rather expensive. The controller still works pretty well though. The very first time I played this, I didn't like it at all because I couldn't turn. Like, at all. It made the angles and stuff extremely awkward. I don't know why, but it defaults this way in the options. Once I turned the turn on, I enjoyed this game a ton more. I'm not sure why having that off is even an option. Anyway, using the right analog stick, you snap a few degrees in either direction, similar to Resident Evil 7. Again, you really do need this on to enjoy the game at all. The aiming and shooting works quite well, and I like how the gun sight works just like a real gun from outer space. What I don't like is all the spidery creatures that go straight for your face. There are trillions of these things, and they get annoying pretty fast. In fact, they didn't remain fun for very long at all. The designers apparently love them like nothing else, but I sure don't. Aside from this, the game is pretty enjoyable, and you should definitely check it out. And there you go, that's a handful of games that are available on the PlayStation VR. You know, I mostly love the system and I'm really excited to see what Sony has up their sleeve for the second generation of VR coming for the PlayStation 5. And yes, I'm sure that HTC Vive and Oculus or whatever are a trillion times better and I should just shoot myself for daring to play on a console. Anyway, what other games should I play on the PlayStation VR? Let me know, in the meantime, thank you for watching GameSack. Sir, if you could just fill this out in triplicate and get that back to me, I'll be able to help you out. What's this? I owe the IRS 14,000 more dollars! Screw this, video games are way too realistic.